Hi, I am Dr. Robin Bissessur, and I'm the Interim Associate VP Research and Dean of Graduate Studies at UPEI. Dr. Bissessur, how would you describe Charlottetown's biosciences sector? Uh, what would you say are some of its strengths, and how do you see it developing forward? A province best known for its potatoes. Uh, the PEI bioscience sector has been becoming a strong economic driver on the island. And UPEI has been involved from the very beginning in the bioscience industry on PEI. The first company in that sector, namely Diagnostic Chemicals Limited, DCL, was actually founded by Dr. Reggie Duffy back in 1970. Just a little bit of history, Dr. Duffy was actually a chemistry professor and was the first dean of science at UPEI. So that's a bit of history. And in fact, a book entitled The Chemistry of Innovation, Reggie Duffy and the Story of DCL was just published last week. And I can't wait to read that book. So the bioscience sector has been rapidly growing and continues to expand even under COVID-19 pandemic with products ranging from COVID-19 related tools to new biomaterials and everything in between. And there are currently 60 companies in that sector, which are supported by R&D organizations such as UPEI, the National Research Council, Holland College, Agriculture Canada, and specialized facilities such as uh, the BioFood Tech, which is an organization that provides assistance to food and bioprocessing companies. So 60 companies in the sector, that sounds like a lot for a relatively small province. Um, and I'd be curious to know, um, what, why do you think they set up in, in PEI? Um, and what are the province's uh, competitive advantages when it comes to attracting company from outside of the province, foreign investors, let's say? Basically, you know, we have a very supportive business environment here in PEI, which includes the lowest small business tax rate in the country at 1%. And we do have a supportive and strong research environment, strong research culture with expertise ranging from natural product chemistry, plant health, fish health, clean tech to animal and human health product development and all aspects in between. And there is also a strong and expanding infrastructure base, including the PEI Biocommons, which is essentially a research park facility that provides commercialization support to the bio bioscience industry. And there are many other facilities, as well as the Atlantic Vet College at UPEI. And what kind of companies operate and invest in the sector? Could you give us a sense of the different, maybe, subsectors? Well, it would be, uh, you know, anything from natural products, uh, fish, health, um, and all kind of products, anything having to do with the food industry, bioprocessing, and animal health everything falls in the bioscience sector, bioscience industry. How would you describe the relationship between UPEI, more broadly academia, and the biosciences business community in general? And what implications do you see this relationship between academia and the business community having on the attractiveness for foreign investors? That's actually a very good question. Uh, UPEI, as well as Holland College, uh, are, are quite well integrated within the bioscience uh, industry. But actually, we are working harder to increase that engagement. We are an active member of the PEI BioAlliance and regularly partner on engagement, trade shows, and so on and so forth. So, and we also believe that universities, you know, have a broad and far-reaching economic impact. And we feel that there are three pathways that exist through which commercialization and industry partnerships activities support the creation of economic impact from UBI ideas, innovations, and expertise. 
So one of the pathways is actually to help support the growth and success of existing and new partners by addressing and solving key challenges. As you know, universities are actually very good at solving problems. If that problem is people, we have well-trained, well-qualified students from UPEI. If it's a technological issue, we have professors with a wide range of expertise we could tap into. And the second pathway here is to co-develop new products, services with partners. Uh, and in this case, we agree that we do not have a solution. A solution doesn't exist, but we work from the discovery end at UPEI and let our partners, let, let the industry partners move those ideas into products. And then the third pathway consists of developing new products and services leading to the creation of new ventures. Again, this may take many forms from startups to partnerships. You mentioned talent, um, and of course, you're well positioned to speak about it. Uh, I'm uh, curious to know about the availability of talent. Um, I, I don't question the, qu the quality, but maybe the quantity. And also what is being done at the provincial level to attract more talent, to train, to also retain the talent. Basically, uh, we realize the importance of the bioscience se sector. And we actually have established transition programs with our college partners for upskilling. So the bioscience sector are regular clients for our work. Integrated learning will co-op and engineering programs. And we recently have uh, the Canadian Alliance of Skills and Training in Life Sciences program, CASEL, which has been recently launched. So it's one of the newest additions to our toolkit, which is specifically designed to address future skills and needs in the life science area. And also UPI is a great place. It's a great university. Um, it has a wide range of undergraduate and graduate programming, you know, that's we can train students very well, we can mentor students very well, and we are producing very skilled uh, trainees, you know, for the bioscience sector and even beyond. Is there a particular area of science, of, of research, or a recent innovation that you're particularly excited about in biosciences? I can give you some example here. For example, um, uh, like I said, uh, UPI is uh, doing world-class research in many areas that ties across the bioscience sector. So I'm just going to give a few examples. Dr. Mark Fass in AVC, Atlantic Vet College, was recently awarded $4.7 million through the Genome Canada GAPP program to develop an early warning system for identifying complex gill disease in salmons. This is actually a global challenge in, for the aquaculture industry, resulting up to $130 million loss in revenue annually. So Dr. Fass is actually a well-renowned expert. So along with colleagues across Canada and internationally, they're going to attempt to address this situation. So another good example here, you know, our product of uh, UBI, Dr. Russ Kea, in our Faculty of Science, founded and grew Nautilus Biosciences, a company that focused on the discovery of bioactive compounds from marine environment. And Nautilus Biosciences was purchased by international specialty chemical manufacturer Croda Incorporated a few years ago. And the company Nautilus Biosciences is now the center of innovation for marine biotechnology at Croda. And one more example, Dr. Mary Ahmed in our Faculty of Science has recently been awarded with a prestigious Emerging Scholar Award from the Canadian, Canadian, from the Canadian Cancer Society. And she will be exploring innovative techniques for the treatment of breast cancer. So there are many great examples, you know, on, on that area of bioscience. So bioscience itself, it's a very broad field. Yeah, as you were mentioning earlier, with all the different subsectors and all the applications for humans, for animal health, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as we wrap up this interview, I want to ask you perhaps to um, summarize and maybe to pitch foreign investors directly uh, about the, you know, the advantages, the unique 
um, you know, yeah, advantages of Charlottetown, of PEI. Um, what would you say to investors in a, maybe in a minute or so? What would be your pitch? It would have to be our collaborative approach to do, to do business, to support business, and especially our track record in the bus and se sector specifically. You would be actually hard pressed to find another region where a company could access key decision makers in such a supported and guided way. And add to that the quality of life in PEI. Highlighted right now with our relatively enviable position with regard to COVID-19 management. And there is no better place to do business. So, and PEI is actually uh, a great place uh, to live, to work, and raise a family. Um, and again, I'm going to uh, re-highlight the low tax rate for small businesses and the collaborative economic cluster model, which is coordinated by our partners at PEI Bio Alliance. And of course, I'd like to highlight UPEI with its wide range of undergraduate, graduate programs. UPI actually plays a critical role in transitioning well-trained students from the bioscience sector and even beyond. So foreign in investors can actually tap into that rich pool of talented, highly qualified students mentored and trained at UPI. So this is uh, what I would say, actually. Safe environment, you know, I mean, low crime rate, you know, uh, everybody knows everybody. Uh, people are very respectful. Uh, it's a very friendly place. Um, and lots of recreational activities, uh, places to go hiking. The beach is not too far away. Overall, the quality of life is actually very good in PEI. It's a great place to get around. It's just one big circle and uh, a bunch of friendly people. In the last... I would say five years or so, even more. Uh, there's been more immigrations and more foreign investment uh, investors coming to the place. So they must like the place. I mean, uh, people are very welcoming, very open, uh, and it's a great place.